What's going on everyone this is Dom and this is the Samsung Galaxy S8 and a huge thanks to the people over at T-Mobile for hooking me up with it early and sponsoring this video. So the Galaxy S8 is a very different device for Samsung and it's definitely one of my favorite smartphone designs to date as well. Everything here is so slick. Samsung really made a statement with the look and feel and this is an extremely comfortable device to hold albeit a bit slippery due to the Gorilla Glass 5 front and backside and very prone to smudges and fingerprints especially on this midnight black model. The curves here are much more subtle than the Galaxy S7 Edge on the display and I definitely appreciate that. And and this is arguably a better design than any of the smartphones that launched before it. But leave a thumbs up if you'd like to see a comparison between the Galaxy S8, LG G6, iPhone 7, or Google Pixel. One detail with the design that you'll notice almost immediately is that Samsung removed its iconic home button from the front side and swapped it with software keys you know, just like every other Android phone out there. Well, the new home button actually provides a satisfying virtual click with vibrations, and luckily they didn't remove the headphone jack just yet, but we do only have a single mono speaker on the bottom, which is a bit of a disappointment. Obviously, the change with the home button is not the biggest issue in the world, unless you're a fan of the fingerprint sensor, which has now been relocated to a very awkward spot next to the camera on the backside. It's just that it's impossibly hard to find as it's nearly flush with the rear glass panel. It becomes a bit easier if you put a case on the phone, but the good news is that Samsung has provided much faster alternatives for unlocking the device. So we do have the iris scanning, which was moved over from the late Note 7 lineup, but now we also have facial recognition, which is by far the best implementation that I've seen with this type of feature. So while the placement of the fingerprint scanner may suck, at least we have two other alternatives that are just as fast in my opinion. All right, all right, let's not forget about that gorgeous display though. This is a 5.8 inch Quad HD Plus Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 2960 by 1440 and rounded corners, giving it 570 sweet little pixels per inch. It is a fantastic looking display and even supports HDR video, though none of this is surprising coming from Samsung. Seriously though, this is by far the best display that I've ever seen on a smartphone. And and its length is very helpful for multitasking or any other situation where a longer display like this can be useful. So while the Galaxy S8 ships with a Quad HD Plus display, if you'd like to experience that full resolution, you're going to have to dig into the settings to take advantage of it as Full HD is set by default. But really either resolution looks good here, though the battery life will be impacted with the higher resolution set. Internally, the S8 is packing the Snapdragon 835 here in the US and the Exynos 8895 in the international models. There's also four gigabytes of RAM and we have 64 gigabytes of storage on board with a micro SD card slot expandable up to 256 gigabytes. One of the coolest specs here is the addition of Bluetooth 5.0, which you can actually connect with and stream over two devices simultaneously. So Samsung calls this dual audio and it's pretty much the best feature for sharing music ever. As far as software and performance goes, Samsung really refreshed the interface miles beyond predecessors. It's actually a very enjoyable experience, it feels fluid, and dumbed down in the best way possible. It's not quite as cluttered as Samsung phones of the past. Samsung is also launching a new assistant called Bixby with the S8, and there's even a dedicated button for it, which is pretty ambitious. And while this feature isn't available at the official release, it seems promising, but I don't think it'll catch on like Google Assistant. And luckily, there are 
software settings that will give you the ability to choose. With Bixby, we also have a new left panel interface called Hello Bixby, which will provide useful information from compatible apps, news, and other things that will help you throughout the day. Though it can easily be disabled from the home screen settings if you don't like it, but think of this as Samsung's Google Now feed. So this year, since there's no specific Edge variant of the Galaxy S series, you'll now be able to enjoy the Edge features on all models. So if you're a fan of them anyway, everything here is just as you would expect. Moving along to the camera, Samsung hasn't changed much, but it's still an excellent camera, though the front-facing camera has seen a bump up to 8 megapixels. Thankfully though, we've been given some cute Snapchat-like features, which hopefully make up for the lack of an upgrade to the rear camera, but probably not. It's mostly the same, with an f1.7 aperture lens, optical image stabilization, and phase detection autofocus, but that's not really a bad thing. The Galaxy S7 or Note 7 both had excellent cameras, and the same story is being written with the Galaxy S8, and it's packing the ability to shoot raw photos, manual video and photo modes, HDR, and more, and it's all proof that Samsung knew they had it going on in the camera department. The camera here is great though, and now it's launched with a double press of the lock button, but it's a bit surprising that the biggest feature on most Samsung phones of the past was basically skipped over this year, but I'll leave a full gallery link below if you want to check out the full resolution photo samples for yourself. As for battery life, it's hard to give you a definitive answer just yet, as I've only spent the last 48 hours with the Galaxy S8's 3000 mAh battery, but I will say that I've had no issues making it through the day. I've been using the phone pretty heavily with high brightness, and I've seen around 4 hours of screen on time at QHD plus resolution, but knocking that down to full HD usually gets me about an hour more. Also with fast charging and wireless charging here, it's easy to top off quickly, but be sure to subscribe for my follow up video with the Galaxy S8 coming out in the near future, but regardless, I don't think that the battery capacity will be an issue here, but only time will tell. So is it really worth picking up the Samsung Galaxy S8? Well, Samsung did a lot right this year, from the design to the subtle software differences. This is a great smartphone all around, and I felt like I really had to dig in order to find things that I didn't like about this phone, but really, my biggest complaints are that the fingerprint sensor placement is a bit terrible, and I'm not sure how useful Bixby will be just yet, but Samsung hit this one out of the park. Let's just hope it stays that way over time. But let me know what you think about the Samsung Galaxy S8 in the comment section below. Be sure to leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This is Dom and I'll catch you in the next video.